It's the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion. This is for Monday, the 21st of February. I'm Michael Groff. Another day with warm and dry conditions here in the valley, but the weather pattern is changing. It is still winter, believe it or not, and we'll get a bit of a taste of that tomorrow and especially on Wednesday as a major winter storm comes into the region, bringing about an increase in clouds, winds, yes, some precipitation, rain, and somewhat low elevation snow. But the big story will be the much colder temperatures Readings around 20 to 25 degrees colder than what we have seen in recent days by Wednesday. And some of you have been asking about the possibility of a freeze or the need to cover up your plants. Yes, we will talk about that as well as we dive in and discuss. First, looking at the almanac from yesterday, 79 degrees, the warm afternoon high. 46 was the morning low. The normal high, 71, the normal low, 50. And taking a look outside right now at 7 a.m., mostly cloudy sky here in Phoenix. We're at 52 degrees at Sky Harbor, dew point at 21, relative humidity 30%. The winds are light. The barometer is rising. The upper air look shows the changing weather pattern underway. A trough is digging in here across the western states. There's a short wave out ahead of the main trough, and that will come through here tonight and tomorrow, bringing about a small chance of showers and an increase in wind. And wind is going to be a big factor with this system over the next couple of days as it comes through the west. Check it out, the watch warning map. We've got those wind advisories and high wind watches and warnings from northern Arizona through Utah, California, Nevada, much of the intermountain west. Elsewhere, we've got winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories extending from Montana and Wyoming, east across to the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Southeast from there, you've got flood watches from northern Arkansas, southern Missouri through Tennessee, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio. The convective outlook for today, that's standard slight risk of severe storms from the Red River of Texas up into parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri over toward Memphis. And then a marginal risk east of there with this system heading out into the Plain States. And a look at precipitation around here. This is valid through next Monday morning from the WPC. Rain amounts in Phoenix generally at or under one quarter of an inch. With somewhat heavier totals up across the rim, they might see one to two inch amounts of rain, although much of that will come down in the form of snow, as this is a very cold system. We'll talk about this in more detail right now as we get to the models. Have a look at it. This is the GFS. It's the 06Z run, valid at 2 o'clock this afternoon. All right, there's our trough developing across the western states, the center of which is over the Pacific Northwest, the lead shortwave coming into the desert southwest tonight and tomorrow. So what it means for us down at the surface today, partly sunny this morning, becoming mostly sunny by this afternoon, high temperatures climbing into the upper 70s, so another warm day. Tonight we are mostly clear overnight lows, mostly in the 40s to low 50s, and then tomorrow... Here comes that initial short wave. We'll turn partly sunny, and there is a small chance we could see a couple of showers with this thing, but they would be very widely spaced, very light in nature. The big story will be the wind. We'll have quite a bit of breezy to locally windy conditions, particularly across southeast California, southern Nevada, northern Arizona, but it could get rather breezy around here. Might see some gusts over 20, 25 miles per hour at times, and that could kick up some blowing dust, particularly along those usual dust corridors, I-10, southeast of Phoenix, I-8, and I-10 west of Phoenix, as well out into the open deserts of southwest Arizona and southeast California. Be aware of that. All right, now here we go to Wednesday, and this is where the main event will take place, a forecast that is a bit more complex than meets the eye, but looking at the surface chart, there's a lot going on here. The bulk of the trough comes on in here. A cold front will swing across the state Wednesday and Wednesday night, and out ahead of it, we'll see numerous to widespread showers, mostly cloudy to cloudy sky, breezy to windy conditions. Most of the rain is expected to be light. It certainly will not rain all day, but off and on showers will be possible. And right along that front, given how very cold the air mass is right behind it, the rapid height falls that take place in the atmosphere, this is a very dynamic system. So we will see some isolated thunderstorms that develop. And should that happen, the strongest storms will be capable of producing some strong gusty winds and maybe a little bit of small hail. So we'll have to watch for that especially midday to late afternoon on Wednesday. Now, as mentioned, this is a rather complex forecast, and there's a number of different factors that will determine exactly where, when, and how much precipitation there will be. And one limiting factor is going to be this thing does not have much moisture associated with it. We've been talking about this for a while. Since it's moving over land, it doesn't have much Pacific moisture that it's picked up. These are the precipitable water values on Wednesday morning. And they peak around a half inch here across south central Arizona, maybe a little higher than that. That's not much. 
So that's going to limit the amount of precipitation we get. But what this thing lacks in moisture, it more than makes up for with dynamics. These are the winds at 500 millibars. That's 18,000 feet off the ground. They're just screaming through the atmosphere. This is the old classic U-shaped component to this trough. So that is an indicator of how strong this system is. So, you know, we'll have enough winds going through the atmosphere, good, good lift. Down in the lower levels, we'll see the, that orographic lift, winds going up the mountains, rising air that will produce some precipitation in those upslope areas, especially along the rim. So we're looking at good amounts of rain and snow there. And the other thing, uh, this has very cold air aloft with it, about three standard deviations below average. And again, these are the temperatures at 500 millibars, um, minus 32 to minus 35 Celsius from northern Arizona through Nevada with the cold core of this system. And that represents the bottom 2% of climatology. So again, a very cold, dynamic albeit moisture-starved system, and that's why we do believe there's at least a potential for a little bit of thunder. And right behind the cold front, right as this thing comes through, there could be a brief window of time where we could see some grouple here in parts of the Phoenix metro area or the surrounding areas. You know, maybe a little rain-snow mix up there around 2,500 to 3,000 feet, certainly above that. So that is a possibility. So if you're in North Scottsdale up on the McDowell Mountains, you know, somewhere in that range, uh, you could see a little rain snow mix or some grapple, uh, some small hail would be possible with some of the stronger storms anywhere across the valley as well. So keep that in mind for Wednesday afternoon, maybe even into Wednesday evening. Now, Wednesday night, this moves out of here quickly and then we'll cool off very quickly behind it. And those overnight lows Wednesday night are going to drop into the thirties for most of us. And there might just be the need to cover those plants, especially in the cooler pockets of the valley. You're away from the urban core, downtown Phoenix. Might want to go ahead and do that as a course of least regret. Now, how much precipitation are we going to get out of this thing? I think that's the question everybody wants to know. And looking at the SREF, this is the short range ensemble forecast. You know, frankly, not much. I mean, we're under two tenths of an inch on the mean here. So this is not going to be a very robust precipitation producer. But I would not be surprised if a couple of isolated locations across the valley, certainly the upslope areas, you know, the surrounding areas, the north and east valley, northern Maricopa County, see a little bit more than that. All right, then Thursday, again, we start the day in the 30s, but then highs are going to be back toward the mid and upper 50s. It's very likely we do not hit 60 degrees on Thursday, despite the fact that we'll have a good supply of sunshine. On Friday, we'll start to moderate those temperatures back toward the mid, maybe even upper 60s with sunny sky. And then over the weekend, highs low 70s on Saturday, mid to maybe upper 70s on Sunday with sunny to mostly sunny sky, dry air continues. All right, let's go to next week. This is Monday, the 28th. High pressure here across the west, a northwest flow aloft, and that looks warm and dry. And going out 10 days, this is Wednesday, the 2nd of March. High pressure across the west and into the Plain States, an area of low pressure off the central California coast, if that verifies. And we'd, again, be warm and dry. Temperatures above average. The European shows a much flatter ridge and temperatures a little bit closer to average, but that just remains to be seen. And looking at rainfall for Phoenix through the next couple of weeks, this goes out through the 7th of March, coming off of the GFS Ensemble. And again, most of the members, if we're going to get rain, it's going to be with this system up ahead and then nothing after that. And again, rain amounts generally, you know, under a quarter of an inch. All right, temperatures off the GFS Ensemble. It's got a high of 57 on Wednesday. And then there's that warming trend, and we get to around 80 or maybe surpassing 80 just after the 1st of March. And that's going to do it for the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for today. My next video due back here tomorrow morning. If you enjoy these videos, be sure to subscribe, like, share, click that notification bell, leave those comments, questions, and suggestions. I invite you to check out my streaming station. It's called KMGX. We play a lot of music. We have a lot of fun doing that myself and the one and only Michelle make that happen for you. So do check it out. I'll leave a link to it in the description. And thank you so much for watching. All of your continued support. It is greatly appreciated. You guys be safe out there and have yourselves a glorious Monday.